Hello, snowboarders of the internet. I'm your host, Averin Lefebvre, and in this video, we're gonna be reviewing the Battalion Evil Twin Plus. It got a new shape for this year. This board features Battalion's medium camber with 3BT and sidekick technology. Now, medium camber is just traditional camber. It's a little bit more mellow. So from contact point to contact point, you have that arc of traditional camber. That's gonna give you all the load, pop, snap, and drive of this board. Now, the interesting thing about this board is the 3BT with the sidekick. This is proprietary to Battalion, and what you actually get is a scooping of the nose and the tail. Basically, it elevates the contact points and bumps up right where they would grip with the sidekick in that 3BT. This reduces edge bite, making it a little more loose and playful, bringing back the drive of the board more underfoot, as well as giving it more optimal powder float in fresh snow or an easier ride in slushy snow because it's like the hull of a boat and it's going to just break up that surface tension and shoot that snow out to the side. This board is available in 151, 154, 156 wide, 157, 159, and 159 wide. I rode this board at Copper Mountain on a sunny bluebird day with average temps, zero winds, perfect corduroy, choppy corduroy, and a little bit of leftover pow, and I rode it with my Rome Black Label bindings and my K2 Thraxxus boots. The overall flex of this board comes in around a middle of the road. You have softer tips progressively stiffening up through the middle. Now there is a key defined flex point in the nose and the tail about midway back from the contact point to the first insert pack. This is where you really want to press the board if you're doing anything. Now what you're going to notice though is that stiffer section through the middle with the camber. When you load it up and drive it, you're going to get more power out of that tail. It works in conjunction with that sweet spot to really flex the board, especially when you're on edge. Torsionally, there is a moderate amount of flex to this board. You can twist it when you need to, but it's not so much that you've got to worry about it at all times. You do get flap in the nose from that 3BT and that softer flex, and it does resonate back underfoot. You're going to feel it. Keep your knees slightly bent and really rutted out choppy terrain. That's where this board can get knocked around, especially if you're going Mach 10. So just keep your knees bent and be aware of it and you'll be fine. If not, you're going to go stiff leg, probably get bucked over, die. They'll find your body in the spring and well, you know, one less person on the hill. The snap is there in this board. You load that camber up, you roll back on the tail, it engages that sweet spot and you pop. You're going to be able to boost a roller, a side hit, ollie over a family of fat skiers. You don't have to worry about it. It's predictable. It works exactly how you want it to, and just like you would think from any other twin snowboard. When it comes to jumps, small, medium, large, it doesn't matter. It's got you covered on all bases on it. You want to be laid back, let the lip throw you? Do it. You want to pop off the lip? Go for it. You're just going to go a little bit higher and a little bit further. That's it. This board is designed to get in the air. Okay, so you got this defined flex point in the nose and the tail, right? Then you got your 3BT and your sidekick to elevate that contact point so that you don't have to worry about it hooking. What you have is a recipe for a board that can butter. You get your weight outside those bindings, you can sit on the nose or the tail and it will lock in, you can go sideways, you don't have to worry about any edge catch because it's elevated, it's beveled unless you're really on your edge pushing into it. Basically this board will do whatever you want when it comes to buttering, but it retains some of its snap. So when you're really pushing into it, just be aware there's gonna be some load, it's gonna to wanna to spring out of anything you do. And when it comes to jibbing, it's the exact same thing. It locks into presses, it holds them, but it's gonna spring out of a nose or tail press. You go sideways, that torsional flex works with this camber of this board, and you just feel it cradle around the feature. It's not so much that it claps out, but it is enough that you can just feel it bend around, and it's gonna be able to just slide through the feature. Basically, this board can jib if you know how to jib. If you don't know how to jib, you, know, you probably should get a disaster instead. This board can carve. It's got a quick and fluid edge-to-edge -edge power transmission from that 3BT, but you do lose some of the bite out at the contact point. It brings it back closer underfoot, so a lot more ankle steering is needed. If you're really aggressively driving a carve, you can hit that flex point in the tail when you're trying to push off of it and it will wash out. That 3BT accentuates that, so tone it down a little bit. But then again, this is a park twin, not a board you're going to go aggressively carve with all the time. It's those short, tight, quick carves that it stands out and medium elongated carves. You notice that you just feel you're on edge and you're just swooping from one side of the trail back to the other. If you know how to carve, you're not going to have a problem with this. You're just going to understand 
that your drive points are moved closer underfoot, more ankle steering. If you don't know how to carve, you should probably learn. Who's this board for? The all around park rider. So with this board getting a new shape, I feel like the flex points in the tip and the tail are a little more accentuated. They just feel a hair softer, which is good. It makes this board a little more approachable. That's not a bad thing. You can really lock into a press. You get a little more snap when you load that camber, roll back on it, and you're about to spring. Overall, this thing is a blast. I like riding it. It's a really good board. You just need to understand that on ice, you're not driving out at the contact points. You're driving it more underfoot, which can make it feel a little bit more loose. But if you're riding softer snow or just good corduroy, you shouldn't have a problem with it. Overall, as I've said, I really dig the Evil Twin Plus. Comparable boards, the Rome Agent Pro, the Ride Bench Warmer, the Capita Outsiders. Binding recommendations, the Battalion Astro ASIM, the Union Ultra, the Ride C6. This has been my review of the Battalion Evil Twin Plus. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you own one? Are you going to buy one? Leave me a comment down below. Let's have a conversation about this snowboard. If you're new here, remember to subscribe, click the bell, get those notifications. That way you're not missing any of the videos we got coming out for all you snowboarders of the internet. And if you really like what we're doing over here and you want to support us further, swing on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP and become a member. Sure, I could tell you more here, but I got a video over there that explains it so much better. As always, I've been your host, Averin Lefebvre, and I'll see you in another video. Thank mm -hmm. you.